Time one is clad vibrant soap, and today I'm going to be making another activated charcoal soap. That soap with that pitch black background, it really makes the colors pop. If you look back at my fireball soap that I did a couple of weeks ago, um, if you look too back, probably you'll find it. Um, you'll see that I really love this um, look of those colors really popping in this background. So I wanted to make another one, and not only that, but my uh, contractor guy who actually happens to be one of my best customers but almost a whole batch so I gotta make some more for the website but I'm gonna treat it a little bit differently I'm gonna put both soaps up here right now maybe you could tell me which one you prefer um, I'm kind of torn between these two styles but I think I'm kind of leaning toward one I want to see if what my uh, take is um, if it matches yours so let's get started with this right now and um, hope you like it okay let's get things going here maybe I'll just speed up through this part you've seen me do this often and if you're not sure what I'm doing right now you can look back at almost any of my other videos That looks well blended. And I'm soaking at about 74 degrees today. I think we're ready for the live solution. I'll speed you up through this part too. You've seen me do this lots of times. I've made over 400 videos. Can't believe it. So let me blend this up and we'll work with the colors. And I want this to be very easy to work with, very liquidy for the kind of pores that I want to do. Okay, let's get the fragrance in there. I love this patchouli rain and up until the time I used this for the first time, I didn't consider myself someone who really liked patchouli. This one's really good. Okay, so that is emulsified so let me get my colors in there I find that this ladle helps me to be a little more neat. So the bowl tends to spill even when I'm really careful. I still find a way to make a mess, but maybe I'm not having as much fun if I'm not making a big mess. Except for when cleanup time starts. I want to use really bright colors. This is a kind of hybrid idea. You saw my fireball soap with all the colors and the charcoal black background. But I'm going to do a pour like my angel pour. My angel heart soap. And I'll link both of those for you at the end. So there's my charcoal, activated charcoal, and I also put some shiny black onyx flare mica in there. And I would like it a little more black. It's kind of gray in this light. I don't like to add it just as a powder, but it's hard to gauge how much I'll need. It's based on what it looks like. I 
shouldn't have to use my blender anymore because of the rest of the colors I'm going to stir by hand when I got that powder in there I got a lot of bubbles in there too I'm going to let some of those bubbles rise to the surface and pop I'll stir it some more after I get these colors ready. This is my bright yellow. I find this little whisk is perfect to mix it and yet not speed up the thickening of it. And it's a light trace after I do this. This Queen of Hearts deep pink mica from Nurture Soap. I find this is the perfect red for this. I get a deeper red, it just doesn't pop as much in the black. And I wanted a lighter version of purple. So that's what this is. Same with this blue, I want it just go really bright. And old dependable green vibrance. Still very workable. And I am going to experiment again today. I'm going to start with my lightest color. What I'm going to do is pour all my colors in a line right on top of each other. I'm going to get more of a prismatic effect. Starting with the yellow. I'm going to keep a little bit of each color for the top. So here's where I'm going to pour from. pouring from about a foot above my bowl. I think I've learned to pour higher and higher as I go along. It helps push everything down. And then as I get close to all the mica I'm going to pour, mica colors, uh, I get a little closer to the surface, so I get some at the surface as well. We go. So let's pour this. And let's see, that's the best lighting. I'm going to pour only in the middle of my mold. I can only guess how that color is going to disperse in the, in the loaf, but I can't wait to see what that will look like. It looks like a, that oil slick rainbow in this pot. Well, that color right there is great. It really looks like that oil slick. Let's try to get a nice swirl out of that. So I'm going to get, starting with my yellow, I'm going to just build my rainbow across the top of that soap. A little easier said than done because it's not going to pour. I've got to spatula, spatula ties it up on top here. Makes me want to have a hot dog with mustard. But it's not going to look like mustard yellow after the soap cures and turn into a nice yellow. 
just wipe down my spatula, use the same one, so I don't have to wash a lot of them. That's my red. As you soap, you kind of start to trust your, your ability to eyeball amounts, but you're still sort of like, um, you get pretty impressed with yourself. I find that even with uh, using the scale, this, um, when you're pouring oils to measure the weight of your oils, um, I find often I just stop right when it hits the right amount. I don't think I was able to do that when I just started. Also helps if you were a cook or a baker in particular. You get to know how to approximate amounts. But definitely when you're making soap you want to use your scale. Looks like we're good here. Okay, we did good. Let's uh, tidy things up a bit. This is the point where I'm happy that I got everything in there and the way I want it. So what do I want to do here? I like it as it is, but it's not very neat right now. So I think I'm going to just zigzag each color so it maintains rainbow effect. If that doesn't work out, I can still do something else. I'm do a little bit of glitter on top. And call it done. Like um, a little bit of glitter just down the center. And we're going to call this one Midnight Patchouli Rainbow. And let's bring you back for the cut. So off camera I was looking at the top and I wanted a little more texture. So I just went in with a spoon and went into every stripe so that I wouldn't disrupt the color bands. And I'm happier with that. Needed a little texture to blend them together. Okay, we'll bring you back for the cut now. Okay, let's cut this. I want you to see the side of the loaf first. And I can't wait to see what's inside. Let's cut off a little end piece first. Until all the colors really show up. Sort of prismatic on the side there. That's what I'm really going for, but I'm hoping as I get closer to the center that I get more of that. Interesting. I wouldn't really have guessed that the way I poured those colors in the center of the pouring bowl would make all the colors happen on one side.
So it wasn't that I poured the colors in a line right in the middle of my pouring bowl. It was that when I poured the soap into the mold, the color really poured into one side of the mold. So next time I'll know to kind of put that right down in the dead center part of the mold when I pour, and I'll get more of that rainbow effect in the center of the soap. This is why we experiment. The little sparkle in the black areas because of that Onyx, shiny mica. Oh, I see what's coming up next. That's pretty cool. Oh, there's some of the really faint swirls of color there too. Next time I try this, this actually gives me an idea, which is what uh, experimenting does, is what I think I'll do is I'll do a in-the-pot swirl with some of those colors first, and then do something like this so that I get more of those faint swirls as well. Couple more cuts and one thank you for tuning in, subscribing, and give me comments. It's been fun sharing this with you guys. Tune into my Instagram page, Vibrant Soap on Instagram, where I also post a lot of photographs that I take, and that's sort of like the input that I get. Um, into my senses that I really believe feeds my creative energy. So I want to share that with you too. And thanks for those of you who have been ordering lately. Wow, that's on the end too. You would not think that that would be on the end, but really interesting. This is why I like experimenting. I like the surprise of the cut. So I'm going to cut a couple more samples on the end here. And I hope you're all doing well. Keeping really busy here. And uh, we'll see you all next time. Got some other ideas for soap. And I'll be sharing that with you also. So take care, everyone. Bye now.